Exposure, a poem by Alex Jennings. Lately, when we talk, you seem farther from me. You're sleepy, not ill, and I know it. I rejoice, but I'm reminded that when you leave us, inevitably, your presence will recede like a companion car forgotten in rear view until you are gone and gone in a permanent escape as your mother, my own mother's mother, all of us. And so, I've known spirits. They've brushed against me in my home, interrupting my vision like bodies and water, cloaked in mystery, offset and angled against my understanding and yours, and my former fiancé says, those are certainly ghosts, but... But... What does that mean? Why have my own dead never returned or spoken to me as they do to my mother? I ask this and ask it. I hate this unknowing, but cleave to it. Some questions should not be answered, or... Or what? What happens if the dead reach out and state their business? Elder Hamlet on the ramparts, urging revenge. And remove all question from my heart. My heart, I say, because it means more than my mind. My hands mean more than my eyes. I speak through them, tell stories. Through them, I connect my body to others. I penetrate in pleasure. What? Ah, unfinished sculpture, a statue without limbs. Hear the sweep of my chest, my masculine tits, forged from sugar and fatted flesh. But why do ghosts appear clothed like obese and shameful swimmers? For fear, for courtesy to the living? Bare thighs, curved, heavy asses, the obscenity of unclipped toenails. A spectral grooming, except... This is what happens when I ask. My mind turns to foolishness and my nerve erodes. I know you must leave me. Please stay. Please, 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 please stay. Carry me on your fatherly shoulders as the sun rises and rises to light an impossible day. A poem by Alex Jennings, Stone Bridge and Laughter, for Elizabeth. Omnia Gallia est visa in tres partes, Julius Caesar. One. How can you be gone? Trees branch a spiral staircase and up onto the landing outside the kitchen. Elder voices, wrinkled hands, apple sauce simmering on the stove I stand, unseen and folded by memory like wet wings on a butterfly see their crazed, print glistening in the dim I will unfurl and fly to meet you. I ask too much, I know, but in this in-between time I feel as if I'm losing my grip on what, who knows, what have I grasped, what fragile life have I held in my meaty mitts scored with, lifelines like highways built for fleas, each memory a furred creature with jeweled eyes and cabot haunches burst from convulsing throat. Lately my dreams feel incomplete, a concert for a band I don't care for, but the music is not as I remember. Instead there, in an absence of sound, of spirit, of communication, is that you? Is that how you reach for me? What of the dream where I return to Paramaribo to live in a Tunisian villa where the owner wanted for murder, hid secretly on the grounds? Or was that Mexico? You never went to Mexico. I thought of you today as I wrote about our trip across the Suriname River into French Guyana. The sky fell and rain like nails drenched us all in seconds. Wheelchair folded like a paper crane in the back of our canoe and your face up turned in the stormy light to the battering drops and that smile, that smile, oh. Two. How can you be gone? How can you be gone from me? I have so much yet to ask. 
Your passport sits on my bedroom bookcase, the one by the bathroom door. Sometimes I look at it, handle it when I feel I'm losing your face or the sound of your voice, and I hear that bellowing call from downstairs, where your voice bent at the top, but your eyes are nowhere on me. My life, my identity have not kept you from me. Nothing has. There are dreams I can't recall further, realms that I can call to mind, and there, at the deepest, the almost deepest center of my labyrinthine memory, where the serpent's head meets the tail we stand together on an ancient stone bridge neither of us knew in life that kneels like a squire before his queen, ready for the accolade, and we speak in hushed tones broken by sudden barks. My memory of you is not aged, not leather, skinned, or always tired or enfeebled after your stroke, when for a week I watched your breath. In the hotel room, certain you would leave me then, that you would rush past me out the door, not even bothering to close it after you, and I'd be left alone in your absence to feel the hole where you've been, in the middle of the air, and I wouldn't know what to do, whom to call alone, alone, abandoned. But you stayed, your eyes rolled, and you clasped my hand in yours, your wrinkled skin so soft, and we said nothing of that room again, so. Three. In the end, you were a space shuttle preparing to launch, unmooring your bright and feathered spirit from the scaffold of your body, your frailty. I couldn't believe I wouldn't. You were ill, but as every other time you would shrug it off, say, it's only liquid sunshine, and charge on over rutted jungle roads into the little French colony with its candy-colored houses and impossibly old men in straw hats with skin so brown it was less complexion than a geologic stratigraphy scoured by wind and time. When I sat to write this verse, you were a blank ness absent to me, silent, but as I worked the stony words, your image resolved into view youthful, once more looking out across water and laughing, laughing for me in your white dress and crimson cape. Like a paper boat, this vision floated downstream. To me, I lifted it into my waiting, hungry heart, like language, like story, and the word. One more gift from you.